This is the little application we're going to make. We've included this file in the folder, so if you, uh, if you get lost, um, it's there for reference. And uh, if you want to sit back and enjoy, that's fine, but try to do this. We're going to do a little Python and a little, uh, build this little application that actually um, reads all the movies in from a folder and um, allows you to basically have a small basic movie selector. So you can use this in any of the tools you're building, whether it's a, um, a video playback system or a little application you want to build for a kiosk or an installation. Um, basically, you can you can just point it at a folder and it will um, it will uh, load everything in for you automatically and allow you to play them back. Yeah. Okay. So um, I have a new uh, touch designer here. And I'm just going to delete all the default nodes like uh, we're getting used to. And uh, close the palette. And I want to make, uh, I want to make a new container component. So we open uh, <coughs> the upgrade dialog and create a container component. And this is because we're going to build a UI panel. We're, this is all a little user interface control panel, so we need a container. And I'm going to call this uh, movie lib for movie, uh, short for movie library, but movie lib. And let's make it, um, I'm going to make it half a HD size. I'm going to make it 960 wide, 960 by 540. Uh, I remember that from previously doing this, but if you uh, didn't want to do the math, you could have gone 1920 divided by 2, and that gives you 960, and 1080 divided by 2 gives you 540, so anything you want to do there. But. Okay, so let's go inside movie, movie Lib. And the first thing I want to do is I want to get, uh, I want to get a list of all the files in one of my, in one of my folders that I, I want to load all the movies that we have in, in, from one folder. So we have something, uh, we have a DAT for that. Uh, if you go to the DAT family, and type in folder, you'll find folder DAT. Now, if we look, zoom in on the folder DAT a bit and look at it, it basically uh, has a root folder it looks at. Right now it's looking at my desktop, and it gives you a row in this table for every single file or folder that it finds there. So this is a good start. Uh, let's actually point it to a folder with some movies in it. Um, I'm going to go to the root folder parameter and uh, hit the plus sign to open the file browser. And then uh, in the folder that we gave you, there's that media folder. You can go inside and grab either 720 or Beeple, but I'm going to use 720. Yeah, use 720 for now. We'll go to Beeple later because there's a lot more movies in there. So 720 is good. So you'll see it, it loads uh, the seven movies that we have in that folder into this list. There's a few other settings I want to change here. Um, on the very first, uh, very first page of parameters, right now I have all extensions turned on. So it's going to load any file it finds with any extension. But if someone throws a text file in here, or actually you'll notice that there's this the thumbs.db. This is not a movie file. So this is not... This is going to screw up our uh, little application. It's going to make a garbage button that we can't use. So let's turn off all extensions and just turn on the option for movie extensions. And this will automatically load any file type that Touch Designer supports as a movie playback file. All right. If I was making a picture gallery that I wanted all the pictures, to, I could use image extensions. Like there's no images in there, so uh, I'm not seeing anything there. But we're doing movies, so movie extensions. Um, OK, uh, so I want to change which columns I'm using, too. Um, there's a lot of columns here that I don't need. I'm not too interested in all of them. So I'm going to go to my uh, columns page. And uh, basically, let's look at what we need here. Um, I'd like the, the name so I know what I'm looking at. I don't want the extension. Uh, I'm not interested in the type size, path, or folder, but I do want the path. I want to know how, I want to know where this exists. Because that way, I'll be able to read it into a movie in top, and then we can start playing it back. 
right? So I have just the, the title here, which I could use as a label down the road or uh, whatever you want, and then the path, which we'll need to actually grab. There's relative path here. Well, we could look at that. What's it look like? Oh, it's just going to give us this. So I'm going to use path, yeah. So what I want to do is create... Um, I want to create a button for every one of these movies. Uh, if I just show you a preview of the finished uh, the finished product over here, I'll drag it over. These right here are, are little uh, previews of the movie that you can select, and when you click on them, it selects the movie. So it's basically a button, right? A, a little control panel button. Okay. So I'll close this again and. Um, Let's go create a container that we'll put our button inside. So um, go to Component and select Container again. Now I, I got to adjust the size for this because I want it not to stretch or skew my, my movie. I want it to be the same uh, sort of aspect ratio as my movie. So I'm going to actually make the width uh, 1280 by 720 because I know that's the size of my movies and it'll be the right aspect ratio. Now this is a good start, but what I want to do now is I want to have one of these for every single row of the table. Okay, So to do that, you remember the replicator we looked at yesterday? We can do a replicator. Instead of copying and pasting this, let's, let's use a replicator for this. So I'm going to uh, open the op create dialog and under comps, find replicator. Okay, it opens the replicator and this uh, this dat underneath it, just kind of a little in the way. Just move move things up. Now the replicator needs a couple things. It needs the t the the table that has the list of things we want to replicate. So let's uh, drag our folder one table. Actually, you know what? Since this is just folder one, let's rename this <coughs> to movie list so we can refer to it all the same later on. It's a little easier to remember and we'll keep things nicely named here. So I reselect replicator and here in the, the template that table, I want to drag movie list. Okay, that's good. And then for everything in this list, I want to make one of these con these container buttons. So I'll drag this to the master operator. Okay. Master operator is in replicator about halfway down. Yeah. Hold on a second. To make this automatic and so we don't have to do work over, we also want to use that, that uh, technique called cloning that Greg briefly showed yesterday. Because as I go in here and I build out uh, how this button works, I want it to happen in all the buttons. So um, container one, which is our, our master template, <clears throat> I'm going to go to the common page and make the clone master container one. So container uh, one has this parameter clone master uh, of itself. Now it doesn't matter because this is just the what we're copying. We're not going to use this in the end. This is just a copy. But now when I, I I'm going to go to the replicator and recreate all these just once. I'm just going to say uh, at the very bottom of the parameters there's a recreate all operators. So replicator recreate all replicators and click all. Now you see some extra lines. These are all clones now. So if I go to any of these, if I go to item 2 and I look at the common page, now it says container 1, and it's looking back at container 1 to figure itself out and to figure out what to put in there. And your way would have been to just drag the container 1 into the clone master into the folder? Yes, but as long as you do it on container 1, it, because then if you later add more movies to it, the one that's recreated needs to have that as well. Because later on, I'm going to point it to another movie bin, and I want it to all like happen automatically. 
dynamically. So, okay, so let's save this file. File save as, and put it in the folder we gave you. I'm going to call it uh, movie select. But if you add uh, this replicator as new uh, as new things come into uh, the folder here, if I drop more movies in there right now, yeah. uh, it will automatically create new ones. Okay. So that's the idea of with the replicator. We can make something uh, dynamic. Okay, so I'm going to move this over to over to the left because I want to split uh, my pane. I want to work. I want to work in the right and left side. So I'm going to uh, to split my pane. I'm going to go over to this little down arrow on the right and say split left right. Okay. And on the right-hand side, I want to go in container 1. Now, if you want to close the parameters on the left side just to make it easier to see what's going on, that's, that's great. Just go over in the side and, and press P. Yeah. So now we can kind of preview what's happening on the, on the left while we work inside container and see how it, it's going. The first thing I, I, I want to do is um, I want to get the information, the information from this table uh, into into the containers. <clears throat> but I just want one row, uh, one row at a time for each of these containers. That's kind of the trick here. Um, we're going to get the wild hunt for item one, and the or our orchard for item two, natural wonders, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So uh, to do this, we can we can inside here we can select out just one row of this movie list on this side, and to do that, since this is a dat, we'll just we'll create a select dat on the right hand side. So go to dats, type in select, okay, so we're going to uh, open the parameters on the <clears throat> on the right side. Now we want to go to the dat movie list. We could drag it. We could drag it over here and drop it and say relative op path. Or you can type in dot dot slash movie list. That's fine too. But if you forgot how that, that dot dot notation works, you can drag and drop and, and re re uh, teach yourself. Okay. Now I want to also um, I want to turn on keep the first row because I, I want to always know um, I'm going to make this a little wider so we can see the rest there. This is a case where I do want to resize the node just so I can see the information. <clears throat> I'm going to say include first row. I want to keep that on. But I only want to extract one row. I just one of these rows down here. So uh, in extract rows, let's turn it to by index. Okay, I get a I get an error, but that's okay because I'm going to change this anyway. I can delete this error by saying delete expression, but I'm going to put a new expression in here. Now, what I what I want to do here is um, for this for for the item one that starts uh, ends with a one, I want to get row one. For item two that starts with a two or ends with a two, I want to get row two. So in 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 this, I can make both the start and row index. The, the the same as the number on this name, you know. Let's just do this, and I think you'll you'll see how it works. So, if I open this up, start row index. So you click on the label to open it up. I'm going to write a very simple Python expression, which is um, I want to I want to look at the parent because it has the the parent name container is the parent. So we'll type in parent. And this is a, a Python method, so you need uh, open parentheses, close parentheses, the round brackets. And then uh, uh, yesterday we also touched on using uh, the, th the thing called digits, which gets the number off the end, dot digits. So I'm going to put in dot digits. OK. 
So that's giving me, see how it's one? Because my parent name is container one. There's a one at the end. So copy and paste this and also put it in the end row index. So does everyone have that? Yeah. Okay. So while you're doing that, I just on the left, I'm not going to do anything new, but I'm going to go in and check, uh, say, item 2 and see if this cloning is working. So I'm going to go inside item 2, and I can see that oh, I, I have all this working here. And look, it's, it's grabbing our <coughs> orchard, which was the second movie, because this one has the name 2, item 2. See how it's it, the same expression is now resulting to two inside here. Okay. So I'll go back up here and zoom out a bit. Now it would be really nice if we could see the movie so that we know as we're working if it's actually doing something or not. So let's uh, let's add a movie. Let's read in the movie. Let's uh, add a movie in. So uh, we double click on the in, in the right hand side inside container and go to tops and find the movie file in top. And type in movie, movie file in. Okay. <clears throat> so we have a movie, but um, we don't want the banana. We want the movie that we're looking for, which is right up here in the in the path column. So how can I get this this path here into uh, this this guy's <coughs> file parameter? So I select the movie and I'm going to make this wider so I can see what's in there. Okay, so if I if I click on this this name here, I can open it and see that there's already a Python expression in there. It's getting our banana tiff from the application samples folder. So there's already some Python in there, but I want to use Python to extract this path here from this table. Let's rename this select to something a uh, little easier to remember, like this is our movie, so I'm just going to call it uh, movie. That's the movie we're using. And this makes our scripting a little easier to understand later on. I, and then I reselected movie file in. Okay. So up here in the, the file parameter, I'm going to delete the, uh, the current the current thing. So I want to go to the operator. This is operator called movie. So I want to go to that operator. So the way we do that is type op for operator. I want to open the parentheses. And you can use a single quote or a double quote. I'll use double quotes here because some people had a hard time with the single quotes in their keyboard. And then type in movie because this is this name movie. All right, we want to get it from that table. And then double quote again and close close that bracket. So this is just going to look at this guy right here. Uh, from row 1 we want to get this this cell here which is the path column. So right, square brackets. I use a square bracket and the close the square bracket and inside I want to say uh, row 1 column 1. So I can just go row uh, co comma one oh sorry one comma one. This is no in our tables our, our table dats it's uh, the notation is square bracket one comma whatever. And the reason is this is by using the numbers, but you can also specify which column and row you want to use by name. So we have a few more options here, and. The reason I want to do this, I'm going to change this to instead of you. I want to use row one still, but I want to call the column by path. So if I put in single or double quote path, double quote, this is more reliable. This makes my system more reliable because if I just had to put in a one here, and then someone later comes on, comes around and and puts in more columns. Notice how the it changes. So that's going to break your system instantly. Now, if I had have kept in path, turn off that. Oh, what happened here? Oops. 
Sorry, my folder died there. There we go. If I keep path in there, no matter what columns are there, it's always going to find the right column. So it's much more uh, direct and, and uh, reliable. Double quotes. You need double quotes, double quotes. Does that, that help? <laughs> Keep a couple square brackets ready. Yeah. Okay. How do I get rid of the magnifier, Marcus? Oh. No problem. That works. Yeah, they're all going to have this going on inside now. So if I go into item 5, I have a movie in there already playing. A different movie. So we're already building this dynamically and not having to do extra work. Yeah, so this is a nice way of making things very dynamic. And like the sunburst, when we, when we change which folder we're looking at, it automatically recreates itself. When I point this to a, a new folder at the end of this demo, we'll be able to load in 50 new movies and not have to do any work. Or 5,000. Or 5,000 if your computer can do it. Yeah. So um, we now need to display this, uh, this movie in the background of all these, uh, all these buttons. So uh, I'm going to do that by creating a, a new, a new container in here. And there's many ways of doing this, but this is just one way. And um, I'm going to stick with it for this example. I'm going to right-click on the movie file in, and then select component and find a container and make a new container. And just place it down beside it. Now, what it did for us is it automatically connected this movie to go uh, in, into the container. Let's rename this container to thumbnail. This is going to be our, our thumbnail. It's container comp. So you want to right you want to right click on the output of the movie file in, and then go to comp. And I also want to make sure this thumbnail is the same size as my uh, my my uh, button that I made. So we want to change the width and height to 1280 by 720. And keep everything the same. So you right click on the output of the top, then go to comp, and select container. And it connects it. Uh, it puts those uh, connectors in automatically for you, and will automatically wire it as well. So it just stay, it saves you a few yeah. steps. Yep, I'll do this all over again. I'll, I'm just going to delete mine. I'm going to right-click on the output of the movie. And it shows you all the tops because it thinks you want a top. But I'm actually going to go over to Components, Comp, and select Container. And I'm going to rename this thumbnail. <coughs> And in the thumbnail, I'm going to change the resolution to 1280 by 720. Okay. It is. But I wanted the aspect ratio right, and I'm too lazy to do math right now. So if I make it that size, it's great. That's not the resolution of the movie. That's just my panel. And Touch has this great ability to scale panels to any size of the window fitting. So later on, the aspect ratio will be right, but the size will be automatically scaled. <laughs> Um, so I want this to, to be in the background of this thumbnail. Um, so if you go to uh, the panel page of parameters, there is a background top. And I'm going to use the, the out node inside there. And so I use a dot slash to go inside the thumbnail and say out one. Because if I go inside the thumbnail, when, when I right clicked on this and it created this automatically for me with all the connectors, we know there's an in connector here and an out connector here. It automatically created. So if I go inside and inspect, look at that, an in and an out one. I could do this manually, and if I had to renamed this to uh, background or BG, I can name it whatever I want. But those are the defaults that Touch uses, Touch Designer uses. Yeah, dot dot slash would be up a level. There's no out one there, so it's not going to do anything. But dot slash goes in. 
I could also have done that. But um, I had a reason in a previous demo to go in here and do some changes. So it allows you to do some work in there. But just showing you some different methods of working, and you can eventually choose your own style. Um, so because this is all cloned, this has automatically got all six of our movies playing and all, uh, all of our buttons. This is getting somewhere. This is, this is pretty nice, right? So if you don't have an SSD and uh, you're trying to play a lot of uh, movies at once, six movies, and they're all 1280 by 720, it's going to start bringing your frame rate way, way down. So what we can do is go to the movie file in and turn off the play parameter for now. The way we where we want to get to is we want to get to something that looks like I'll show you like this, where only the big yeah. viewer is playing. But when I mouse over, yeah, yeah. when I mouse over, that's how they. So let's make our panel. Um, let's let's check out our panel and see see how it's working. On the left side here, I want to go up up a layer to see how my panel's doing. So I, I'm up on project one. If you just click on project one on the left. Now I only see uh, one movie. And that's because right now I haven't placed or I haven't laid out all those buttons. And I made them 1280 by 720. So they're huge and they're sitting there. And they're all stacked on top of each other. So they're not doing me any good like that. So I'm going to open the parameters for this, this container and look at what I have uh, as layout options. In the first page of parameters, there's a, a bunch of, uh, these are all for layout. You know, you can move things around, you can scale them, um, but they ha there's an alignment option here. And I think yesterday I showed you how to lay out buttons left to right horizontally. Um, that's nice, and it works for one case, but I want to make a grid. And if we use layout grid rows or layout grid columns, it will take everything inside and try to fit into a grid and, and scale it. So we don't have to worry about the size. It just does the best job of scaling possible. So select layout grid rows. So that's not bad. There's some issues where it's not perfect, but we're going to fix fix the issues. So why is there seven? Well, let's go inside and look. I'm inside now. I'm inside MovieLib again. We have the six. We have the six copies that we wanted. They are all from this table here. So then the replicator is creating them all. But container one, our master template, is also. It's also grabbing a movie and displaying it. So this is the uh, the outlier that we want to get rid of. This this container one. Okay, because we only really want the ones that are being replicated. This is a double. This is a duplicate. So select container one and uh, go to its parameters, open its parameter box. And uh, on the layout page, there's nothing for display. But on the panel page, if you select panel, there is a display parameter. So I'm going to turn this off. OK. So I, I don't want to navigate out of here now. I want to look at the panel, the panel that we're in uh, without, without navigating. So we'll use this. Remember this square thing where we can open the viewer of where we are? Just click this little square icon, and we'll get a picture of the viewer. So now we, we have six. So that's, that's all right. Yeah, so there's a problem with what we just did, though. This is what I'm getting to. You found it already, I think. If I turn off the display and I reload the project or I start putting in new movies, it's going to copy that container one and the display is going to be off. So for example, if I go to Replicator and say recreate them all, they're all off. So I need to get a little smarter about this. So container one has its display off, but every time I replicate something, I want to turn the display on, just for the replicated ones. Every time I make a copy, I, know I want the, the system to do it for me. So uh, the replicator has this, uh, this script that called replicator callbacks that is attached to it. 
and it will run uh, it will run this script every single time uh, it creates a new copy. So let's zoom in a little here and look at what it says. It says uh, for the replicate function um, for all C in new ops. So this is just for all components in the new ops. Do this and then finish. Now the the hashtag is a comment. So so we've commented out these lines. But this is something that we do so often. We actually put the line in there that you guys already need to turn on the display. C dot par dot display equals one. So every time I replicate something, make the display equal one. So to make that work for us, all I have to do is turn on the viewer and remove the hashtag at the beginning of that line. Make sure you don't hit delete twice because if you went back like this, Python needs proper indentation. That would break the script. So you just want to remove the hashtag. So now that this is C par equals one, let's try recreating it again. It didn't work. Well, to save his computer from exploding, we turned off the movies from playing. So they're stuck at frame one and they're not playing, right? Okay, um, over here, I'll, I'll just close this. Over here in the, in the movie file in, I turn the play the play to off. Let's just fix this up a bit. Should we switch it on now? No, leave it off. Okay. Leave it off. Yeah. There's a few options. Let's let's go into one of the ones that is uh, that's off. Um, it doesn't item two. Let's go into item two and, and look at it, and select your movie. If I was to uh, just quickly queue, uh, queue a frame here, press the Q pulse button, it'll just give me a, even though it's not playing forward, it'll give me a frame. So that's really, that's pr really good. So if we could get, every time we replicate those things, if we could get that button to be pressed, we'd be in business. Okay?